Welcome to the Deerwood Realty Show. I'm John Shing, founder and managing broker of Deerwood Realty in St. Louis, Missouri. The housing market's odd. I, I, every day I see statistics that say that we're just in a lot of trouble or things are just great. It's, it's just the most bizarre thing. And it always reminds me that all real estate is local, right? Things that are going on in Florida and Arizona don't really affect me here in St. Louis as far as house prices. Uh, we're going to get to an article in a minute, and it's just like, this is not what I'm seeing. When I go out with my buyers, we, we don't see <laughs> price drops. Okay, In fact, we see um, people bidding up properties. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks. And to the same side, I mean, when we're listing properties, um, I'm, I'm still looking at what's, what's available and what's sold in the last six months, and pretty much just, and just hitting right from there, which is the way I've always done it. So, and there's been no penalty. So just because something's going on in Florida doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen here in St. Louis or wherever you live. So let's get into the article here. Um, I thought it was interesting. It's from Newsweek. It says Americans are dropping home prices as buyers lose interest. And of course, if you're not, you know, in the, in the business, if you're just a random person reading Newsweek, you're like, oh my God, everything's going horribly all of a sudden. And it's just not the case. It's just not the case. So let's get into some of the stuff and, and we'll go through it here. It says, home sellers are cutting prices in an attempt to attract buyers amid evidence of lagging demand and analysis by real estate platform Zillow. Well, Zillow is, you know, is not liked by most real estate agents for very good reasons. Um, so home sellers are cutting to attract buyers amid evidence of lagging demand. Well, where? I think that should be the first question. It says, listings that show price reductions went up by more than 22% in what Zillow says was the highest rate in six years. Price cuts could be due to slowing demand, the real estate platform pointed out. Buyers are slowing their interest in purchasing homes, evidenced by things like falling house tours during open houses. And how would Zillow have that information? Well, funny you should ask, Zillow bought Showing Time, which was the platform and still is the platform that every single real estate agent uses in the United States to plan a showing. There was another one back when I started, but it got bought out by showing time. You would think that there's like a, like, like, like somebody would look into like monopolies and things like that, but not for that particular industry, apparently. Um, so they know the, the traffic. Okay. And I would say that traffic was off for the last listing that I had, but it still didn't matter. There were still like seven or eight offers. So anyway, um, also, like when you look at percentage, you have to look at the numbers like kind of relatively. I mean, if you've had record lows and you come off of those lows, the percentages are going to be higher or they're going to look higher. So it says amid price cuts, buyers are also seeing a market that is affording them more options. The supply of homes available for sale has gone up with inventory jumping 6.4% last month compared to March. And on an annual basis, supply for four sale properties soared 18%. Now look, we were on historically low inventory. So any move up is, is great, but that, that doesn't mean that things are like back to normal. By, although, again, I don't know that it's ever gonna be normal. This, I mean, the way people have been acting has just been odd. It says the housing market is grappling with affordability issues, and this is, this is classic. Mortgage rates are hovering over 7% after the mid-6% range earlier in the year. Elevated borrowing costs for homes have depressed activity as buyers are reluctant to enter a market where they'll be confronted with high monthly payments. It says nothing about inflation. It says nothing about inflation. Inflation is the real problem here, okay? Inflation is the real problem. And the way they've, the Fed has decided to fix inflation, which they're not going to be able to do because there's a tremendous amount of spending, the way they've decided to fix it is they've raised interest rates. It's not gonna, f it's the, the inflation is so bad, I just don't see that happening. I just hit a button on my keyboard, so I hope we're still recording. <laughs> anyway, with rates about 7%, if a buyer purchases a home with a 20% down payment, they will potentially need to pay more than $1,900 a month. That is nearly 12% higher than it was a year ago and a 113% jump since the pandemic. Well, that's on a $359,000 house. Now look, I don't, I don't have a problem with that, that logic, but I, again, to, the price 
the price is is higher than it was due to inflation. It's not it's not an affordability issue in my opinion because if mortgages were down at 3%, people would still be buying them and inflation would still go up. That's how messed up things are. The cut in prices from sellers comes at a time that should be vibrant for this for a vibrant season for the housing market. Yeah, I, I agree with that. In, in Like in St. Louis, it's seasonal. Okay, like April, we start seeing more and more listings. Um, that's That happens every year. It's not unusual, but I, I don't know that places like Phoenix would be the same or Florida. What would be the, I mean, the driving factor would be school, people, people out of school, I guess. I don't know. It says, home values continue to grow, but more slowly than the seasonal norm, and the speed of sales fell behind last year's pace. Well, could you really continue the pace that we've been on? Sellers appear to have opted to drop prices amid a slowing market. Well, what else are they going to do? They're going to raise prices? And some of this stuff is kind of elementary. Price cuts can be a sign of weakening demand that foretells softer price growth ahead. Or it could be a sign that people have priced their homes and they're just flat out greedy and they're trying to get the absolute most they can and their house just isn't worth it. Uh, this could be a way for sellers and the representatives to attempt to understand what pricing will match the market. And I want you to see a, a sleight of hand here by Zillow. This could be a way for sellers and their representatives. Do you notice how they've gotten rid of the agents or the realtor word? And why do you think that is? This must have been an oversight, right? Zillow, Zillow likes real estate agents, right? They do everything to be nice to real estate agents. They, they certainly are their partners, right? You'd think that, but you'd be wrong. Uh, the latter scenario becomes more likely in a rapidly changing market like we see today with relatively few recent sales to compare against. I don't even know that that's true. I mean, if I see something within the last six months, uh, I'm pretty close to where we need to be. Homes that sold in April sold in 13 days, which is fast by historical standards. However, that is three days slower than last April, the first time since June of 2023 that the speed of sales fell behind the previous year's pace. So what? Three days means nothing. By the way, days on market is just, it's, it's subjective in my opinion, and I'll tell you why. If I put something as pending, it's no longer on the market as it is, but if I could put it, I, I could put it contingent and then it would stay, it would still keep clicking on the days. Plus, it just, it's, I could make it active, okay, but not have any showings for like a week, and I would still be fine. So, so days on market to me is, especially with three days, and especially since we're comparing to June of 2023, is nothing. It says, what's next? Experts have said that unlocking the housing market will come when borrowing costs trend down. At the moment, the cost of a mortgage is elevated mainly as a result of the Federal Reserve's hiking up of interest rates policymakers instituted to battle inflation. No, it's inflation. That's, that's the thing that really gets me is, look, when, when I was out there, okay, and a house that would normally sell for 300000 is going for $150,000 over asking, okay, that's inflation. That's inflation. The only reason why you're able to afford that is because the mortgage rates have been uh, messed with. And that, that's why this is, such a, this is such a problem. Inflation continues to be above the central bank's 2% target, even as it has slowed from the 9% level it hit in June of 2022. 9% inflation. Policymakers have suggested that evidence of cooling inflation will spur them to slash borrowing costs, which will help lower mortgage rates. Well, what's going to happen if you lower mortgage rates? Do you think people are going to stop buying houses? I mean, this thing just gets turned back on like a fire hose. That's the problem I have with the Federal Reserve in general, manipulating rates. I mean, there's, there's nothing to stop the financialization of housing, single family homes, and it's a problem. And no one has bothered to step in and say, hey, maybe this is a problem. You know, on a normal listing, I'll get four or five flippers to put in an at market bid, at asking. Flippers, not even regular home buyers. These are investors. That should tell you that things are not okay. Anyway, thought that was an interesting article. As usual, I had some questions. wanted to go over them with you. Um, let's get to it. Now, I, I kind of screwed it up. I need to put it over. I need to move this over here. Okay. There we go. I had to, had to do something on my computer. So 
Here we go. What are the key factors causing home sellers to reduce prices in the current market? And I said, there's only one factor. Their house isn't selling, and that's the way it always is. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter about anything else. You could have an ugly house. If you price it right, it'll sell. Uh, how do high mortgage rates impact buyer behavior and overall market activity? I feel like high mortgage rates should be should have already put a chill on the buyer behavior, but it just never happened with any severity in St. Louis. Can it? Of course, but it hasn't yet. Yes. When we went from a 3% market to a 7% market, I just assumed prices would come down because no one would be crazy enough to pay $2,000 a month or more on a mortgage. That's just insane. No one would do that. Here we are a year and a half later, still doing it. Um, what does the increase in home inventory indicate about the state of the housing market? Uh, I don't think that the home inventory numbers were sustainable over time. At some point, you were going to see new inventory. It's just really been a question of how much is and where. As an example, we're seeing a robust amount of sales in new construction homes over existing ones. And yet, even in this space, there's starting to be more new construction homes built and ready for sale now than there had been two years or so ago. So, you know, we had low inventory, yes. Any bump we get off of that is going to be indicated in the numbers as, to me, a, 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 a greater percentage than what's really going on. How can sellers strategically price their homes in a market with fluctuating demand? Well, you start with your neighborhood. What's going on in your neighborhood? What's sold in the past six months? You compare your prices with the houses that have sold. Is your house better or worse? Okay. Well, who's your ideal buyer? And if you answer these questions, it will get you in the ballpark of pricing your home correctly. You know, it's it's really, it's, it's not that hard to do pricing. What, what, what makes it hard is there's these biases. We have our greed. We have, you know, a, a sense of pride about our own home. And that causes us to price things wrong. But if you just, just do what I said, I, I think you'll be in pretty good shape. What are the potential long-term effects of the current market trends on home values? Houses are up around 50% in, in over two years in St. Louis. That's ridiculous and unsustainable. But we know from economics that prices are sticky, meaning they will quickly move up, but they are sticky and that they uh, tend to go down at a much slower rate. I think we will have to get out of this mindset that a single family home is an investment over being a place to live. This monetization trend of single family houses is not beneficial to anyone in my opinion long term. And I will stand by that. There are people making a fortune right now, okay? But it comes at a cost and it will it, we will have to pay it at some point. How might changes in the Federal Reserve policies influence future mortgage rates and housing affordability? That's to me that's a real question is is, is if the Federal Reserve is even in control. Even with an increase in interest rates, they don't control spending, and the government is spending so much money, they're pretty much the drivers of inflation. I don't see a scenario where all that changes until things break down. Republicans, Dem Republicans Democrats, all they see is spending. So until we stop this ridiculous spending, which isn't going to happen with modern monetary theory, it's just going to go off the rails. Let's find out. You may say I'm a doomer, but I don't know when it's going to go off the rails. I mean, at some point I'll be right. Just like the people that, are, that say that things will be good are right now. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Um, in what ways can buyers take advantage of the current market conditions? Well, it depends on where you live, of course. But one of the main drivers of price is how much work do I need to do to make the house my own? So, so much of the available inventory is homes where there are sellers moving into nursing homes, etc. If you know you're going to need to do work, be picky and, and pick a house with good bones, but is in need of just cosmetic updates. You know, taking on a, a you know a, a Victorian home remodel, a complete gut job is probably, you know, probably not something you want to do. Okay, but you know, if a house has a new roof, if a house has new HVAC, you know, if the house has updated plumbing, uh, the sewer system is now you know set up in, in PVC over clay or iron look i mean you've got good bones the foundation isn't settling you know isn't cracked and everything you know look for those houses over the houses where there's serious serious work that needs to be done that doesn't help you with your aesthetics it doesn't let you have the house you you want and and can live in how do economic factors like inflation and interest rates interplay with housing market dynamics well they've had a few huge effects as we've seen the asking price increases are a result of inflation, but the artificially low interest rates added to this inflation as well. 
that's added to the price inflation. All of a sudden, we could afford more, so we were able to pay more. What lessons can be learned from the historical housing market fluctuations to better understand today's market? Well, people are quick to compare the real estate market with 2007, 2008. I think it's a faulty comparison, not because people can't all of a sudden stop paying their mortgages again, but so many people saw that as a blip on the radar screen and an opportunity to buy that dip. We're forgetting the people who were hurt by the meltdown and are doubling down. There was no, who was the, who was the victim in the last housing crisis? How should both buyers and sellers prepare for potential market shifts in the coming months? There are huge things going on in the marketplace in the next three months. The Realtor Commission settlement is going to shake things up in the marketplace. I have no, no doubt. I have no idea what's going to happen exactly, but I do understand the law of unintended consequences, and there will be many. As a seller, you are never in a bad spot if you're paying attention to comparable sales. And as a buyer, as long as your motivations are correct, that is, you're buying a home for the long term, and if needed, you could stay in that home forever, you will be okay. Why might some regions like Florida be experiencing a cool down while others such as St. Louis, Missouri are not? Well, Florida, Arizona, Texas, much stronger economies, much more boom bust versus what we see in St. Louis as just a continual decline in population year after year. Uh, what local factors could influence whether or not St. Louis, Missouri sees a similar trend in the future? Well, I just don't see St. Louis as ever getting back to the city that hosted the 1904 World's Fair. When large employers are looking for new company headquarters, weather, economic environment play a huge factor. Our weather isn't great, and our economic policy is atrocious for attracting new business. Therefore, I think we will continue to stay well behind the trend. When a market like Phoenix goes down, it could be years before we see the decline, and the Phoenix market could be rebounding while we are stuck. Now, look, I remember during 2007, uh, I went to Denver a few times, and my God, there were construction cranes and everything going on in 2009, 2010. When in St. Louis, I mean, the, the skyline was literally construction cranes, and here in St. Louis, there may have been one. It's bad. Uh, with that, I'm going to head on out. Uh, I, I just want to put out there that, you know, hey, I am on YouTube, but I'm also on Rumble. I'm also on X. I'm also on Locals. You should be able to find me if, if you're looking for real estate content. So please uh, subscribe, follow me, and, uh, and let's grow something fun, enjoyable. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later.